Another disastrous Biden event, one that even included Bernie Sanders. Meanwhile, tons of supporters outside Walter Reed and all across the country, for that matter, showing their support for President Trump. Chris Wallace lost his mind, and so did CNN, but they never really had it, in fairness. We'll show you a couple clips. We'll show you why coming up here in the show. Plus, John Mills joins us to talk about the upcoming election. It all starts right now. Welcome to the show, folks. Hope you had a great weekend. Thrilled to be with you. Fun shows lined up all week. We're excited about it. And, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. You know, you've, you've seen all of the nastiness go back and forth about Trump, his diagnosis. Now, you know, other people, several senators, White House staff who've come down with COVID. And you see the nastiness. The mask is off. Kind of talked about that in that clip yesterday. The mask on the Democrats has come off. America is seeing them for who they really are. But what's remarkable is is Joe Biden's been out there, right? He's not in the hospital, though he you could argue he should be. But he's not in the hospital. President Trump has outworked him, outappeared him, made more appearances, whatever you want to say that. He's 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 been more visible and engaging while at the hospital. Granted, I I get it. He's not admitted and in a bed, but but he while dealing with COVID out of the White House at Walter Reed Medical Center has been more active, more engaging with the American people than Sleepy Joe on the other side, which really, I guess, is not that surprising. But it's pretty astonishing to see if you think about it. We'll get to that. We'll show some of the videos of his supporters, have, have him taking his little tour and, and, and greeting the supporters, albeit from a car. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Real quick on the show, though, guys, we, we have a lot of fun bringing it to you. We really love your support. I know I tell you that all the time. And... It's important that we do because we really do genuinely love your support. But we're seeing epic levels of suppression go on right now, I presume related to the election, whether it's on Facebook, which ties into then website traffic for DrewBerkwist.com, whether it's right here on YouTube and seeing, you know, views and stuff not get out there for people to see. People, we've, you know, we've got a great big audience who, who is here and wants to be here to see stuff, but it's not getting to see the stuff, not getting to see the clips uh, it's been unreal, the dips that we've seen. And again, I I put it with big tech and I put it with the elections and, and all that's going on right now and all that's coming up because they don't want voices like mine and yours and they don't want what Americans want out there. Uh, all that to say, though, make sure that you're following on Facebook, Twitter, Parler, all those, all those spots. Make sure that you're, more importantly, sharing and and here on youtube if you haven't subscribed subscribe like we really need you to subscribe and then sign up click that bell icon so you can get notifications because folks if we don't share we don't try and get around some of the algorithms they've got some of the 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 hatred that they have towards conservatives and christians in general we're we're not going to get the message out and it's critical more now than ever it's not just about our livelihood and doing the show it's about getting the message out so we need your help doing that. Uh, we're going to be starting some other stuff as well on the side. We've got our channel over on Rumble. We've got one coming on Clout Hub. We'll tell you more about that this week. Um, but it's important that we keep these ones going too because we shouldn't be squelched. We shouldn't be suppressed. And and it's happening. And we need your help to try and get around that. So share away. Let's, let's distribute this stuff wide and far and, and hope that we can get the message out. All right. So we've, we've heard all the lazy ridiculous claims as it pertains to the wildfires out west which are awful they're tragic people have lost hot their their homes their lives their pets all sorts of stuff we've heard it all though right we've heard that president trump is is to blame of course not the the gender reveal parties or arsonists but president trump we've heard that climate change is to blame but this new claim from an oregon state university professor is a new one to me it's kind of next level and it kind of blends all of those things together because she definitely attract, attacks Trump. She definitely goes after the climate change angle. But Susan Shaw says that white Christians are to blame for the fires. Not just, not just Christians in general. Not just white people, but very specifically white Christians. So if you are out there in that category 
whether you're an active believer, super engaged in your faith, your church community, or or less so, but but grew up in the church, but you're a Protestant, you're a Catholic, what have you, you're to blame. It's your fault. You didn't know that when you woke up this morning, but it's your fault, and I hope that you feel guilty for it. I mean, this is next level crazy, y'all. Next, I don't feel any guilt because I didn't start the fires. It just is that simple, Susan. White Christians aren't to blame, but she says many Christians, especially white Christians, have embraced denial of climate science. Some of us have because what you guys talk about is garbage. She also said the white church is mostly complicit with the intersecting systems of racism and global capitalism that underlie climate change. It's hard to combat these people who, who, who go straight for climate change. They go straight for racism right out the gate. And they do that because they can blame you and anything they want on racism or climate change because they know it's a bogus argument. But they know that if you fight back, then you are racist or you're a climate change denier or you're fill in the blank but they go straight for cancel culture then and the conversation's over. You do not have a voice. You do not get to respond. You do not get to say anything that's contrary to what they think. So Oregon State University, Susan Shaw, yet another person who's now blaming me, many of you in the audience, not the black churches out there, black Christians, you're okay. You're, 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 you know, and you're having a rough year. I'm glad that you are. We'll take the heat for this one, even though it's not warranted and <laughs> not true. But that's what Susan Shaw thinks. That's who's teaching your kids, by the way. Not just at Oregon State, at schools across the country. There's a, there a professor, side point, I'll, I'll, let me just go off topic here for a second, at Stanford, also someone out west there, who says the only way to get over COVID is just to start over. Let's just start over, wipe out the, the, the entire race, human race, and start over. That's, that's the option. So he's, he's really... Like, he's not on the, I think we need masks, I think we need social distancing level. He's obviously not on the flip side of that, where we, t- hey, we just got to open up and we'll, just, we'll get through this, we'll get past this, and, and let's get things going. No, no, he's, he's straight up, everyone's got to die. Everyone's got to die, go away. And again, as ridiculous as he is, and this Susan Shaw chick is at, at Oregon State, these are the people teaching your children. And if you don't have children, these are the people teaching the next generation that's going to be up, up and coming, out there working in the workforce. Or they'll join Antifa, one of the two. I don't know. We'll see what they do. Either way, they won't be beneficial to society. But that's what's being taught. All right, guys. One way to push back is you can go over to mammothnation.com right now. They're a conservative discount club. They are awesome. They are on a mission to get President Trump reelected, as well as other GOP members we need to keep these crazy people that align with the professors we talked about, these crazy radical Democrats out of office and mammoth nations on a mission to do it. It's only $19 a year. If you join right now, you get entered into the election day sweepstakes. You could win a 65 inch Samsung TV, Aquarian coffee maker, Bose speaker, all sorts of other stuff. But better than that, it's better than a donation because you, you, that $19 a year, you're going to get paid back for on your first purchase. You get amazing discounts on all sorts of killer products out there, whether it's wireless, travel, you name it. There's something that'll scratch your itch, I promise. And if you become a lifetime member like me, they'll send you a free Trump flag, some other goodies right to your door just for joining. So head on over to mammothnation.com. Let's join the fight so we can win this November. It's so important, people. It's so important. All right. I'm... I'm I'm hard on this generation that's been coming up just, just kind of behind mine the t- or the two behind mine. And for good reason that, I mean, they're pretty ridiculous. There's some wonderful kids and young adults in there, but there, but there's some really awful ones too. You're seeing that in 2012, you're seeing it out in the street. And I always talk about, you know, kids that weren't spanked kids, the kids that were given participation trophies, all this stuff that fosters just a loser mentality and an entitled mentality. But one of the other things I have a problem with, and part of it is I don't like my face, so I don't like to do these, but I don't like selfie culture. I don't like it. If you like it, that's fine. Whatever. I'm just not a big fan because I think, particularly as it pertains to this younger generation, but adults who do it too, it 
it just ramps up and adds to the problem of me, 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 me. And that's the culture and society that we've got. And that's part of the reason we've got all these problems we have out there. Now, I'm not saying that every time you take a selfie, you have that attitude. You could be a wonderful person and still take a selfie. But you know what I'm saying? Like there's so much, so much out there where, where people are doing that. But this, this, this selfie didn't go well. And I'm not applauding this or, or, or excited about this to be clear so for all of you haters who are going to say that as soon as I do I don't think they deserved this but there was two college students who were in uh, Philadelphia I think Temple University students they were on a rooftop having a party four stories up and these two gals decided to take a selfie problem is they forgot they were on a rooftop four stories up and they fell from said rooftop down into an alleyway all because they were trying to get the perfect selfie got to get that selfie now thankfully it looks like one only suffered leg and ankle injuries which is beyond me i don't know how if it's in fact a four-story building which all the reports have said that's that's pretty remarkable on its own the other one's in critical but stable conditions so again i'm not elated that this happened i'm not happy that this happened but pay it. I mean, if you were paying attention, if you're not texting and driving, you don't get an accident. If you don't take selfies, you don't fall off roofs. Those are the rules. That should be a t-shirt. I, I just, I don't like, this world is not about you. It's not about you. We're all just kind of like extras in a, in a, in a crazy big movie. And, and this year's movie sucks. It's not a good one. Like the ratings aren't going to be good for, for 2020, but It's not all about you. You got to take care of you. You got to take care of those around you, but it's also not all about you. And if it is, you're going to live a lonely, miserable life, a disappointing life, and people aren't going to like you because you're not, you're not the center of the world. I'm not the center of the world. You aren't. That's just the way it works. Don't take selfies. Don't fall off roofs. Thank God they are okay. And hopefully they learned their lesson and we'll never take a selfie again. All right, guys, you know that we love veterans and first responders on this show. If you don't, you've not been listening. You've been watching Mute. You need to turn the volume up because we love our vets, our first responders, anyone, our contractors who go overseas, whatever they they might do, Intel people like myself. And we love supporting companies that do as well. Soldier Solutions is a patriotic apparel company, an awesome company, guys, that are committed to helping fix the growing problem of unemployed vets. They also spread awareness for men and women who are wounded in combat and the struggles that they face, which is so real. We've talked about that on this show too. So real, so important. They know about it, they care about it, and they are making it their mission to help fix it. They partner with Operation Companion, as you can see on, on the sleeve of some of their shirts here, uh, to, give, to get funding to provide service dogs for some of these fine vets, individuals who have been wounded, have other issues that they're dealing with. Plus, they've got awesome patriotic merchandise. You can see here, we've got some examples I'm wearing one today. I'll wear one tomorrow. Awesome stuff. It's awesome stuff. So head on over to soldiersolutions.com right now. Get some swag and support the cause. If you use promo code Drew, you'll get 10% off your purchase. And again, it's going towards a great company, guys, who loves veterans, takes care of veterans. Again, soldiersolutions.com. Use promo code Drew to get 10% off. All right, let's cruise the headlines. So Bernie Sanders is the one kind of person on the left that I would say over the last four years, give or take, I guess you could extend it back a little bit into 2015, maybe depending on, but he's the one person that's kind of been able to rally, not in direct comparison and certainly not to the level of president Trump, but he's been able to get some crowds, some excitement going because people love it when, you know, uh, comedians show up, clowns show up or someone who who shows up and says, I'm going to give you tons of free shit. That's just, that's kind of how life goes. Bernie says the, the, the last one there. He, he, he promises everything will be free for eternity. There's, of course, no way to do that and no plan that, that works. Um, but he's garnered a lot of attention. He got a lot of attention. He's been robbed two election cycles in a row. The DNC totally screwed him in 2016, and they totally screwed him in 2020. Both times they chose an awful candidate to represent the party. We're seeing perhaps the worst candidate we've ever seen right now. To represent the party and it's shown when you've got someone like bernie 
who can garner some excitement. And then you've got this disaster of a candidate in Joe Biden. Bernie made an appearance for the Biden campaign this weekend. And I mean, it was a disaster. There was like a dozen or so people out there, maybe a baker's dozen. Um, but it wasn't good. Roll one. Bernie Sanders. I mean, are you kidding me? That's if you didn't get the full sense of how embarrassing it is there. Let's show this tweet. There's a picture here that you can kind of see all of it. There you go. There you go. If you, if, if we don't have it there, if you zoom in the, the, the gal that's right in front of you, and I think it's that one who's in the black shirt, her shirt says staff. So I don't know who she's staffed for, but it's not good. It's not good when you continue to say, I'm the right guy for the job. The right guy for the job. It's not Trump. It's me. It's Biden. But you can't speak without <clears throat> having a gaffe, without having a teleprompter, without having a moderator like Chris Wallace who's in your pocket, without having whatever the hell that wire and other stuff was he was wearing during the debate. There's a lot of things that Joe needs just to, to get up and get out there and, and say some very basic, simple things that should be who he is and what he's, he's all about and what he's doing every day. He shouldn't need cue cards. He shouldn't need note cards. He shouldn't need any of that stuff to tell America who he is, what he's about. <clears throat> but alas, he does. But speaking of bad optics... Who thought giving Jill Biden a huge eggplant to hold up during a trip to Minnesota was a good idea? I mean, yikes, right? I, I get it. I, I, don't, I don't know if she was at a farmer's market or whatever. You can see other produce there. But it's just not a good look. It's not a good look for a campaign that's had no good looks this whole season. This whole campaign season from leading up to during the primaries where he was really getting crushed again by Bernie most of the time. Eked it out in the end. Thanks to Elizabeth Warren dropping out at the last at the last bit there and a couple other things that went his way. But God, I mean, it's just not good. But as the Biden campaign, as they do nothing other than continue to dig themselves more holes, remarkably in the mainstream media's polls, climb and climb and climb and, and widen their lead on the on the, the Trump campaign. Trump's been working his ass off from Walter Reed, as I said at the top of the show. From Walter Reed, you've seen the pictures, you've seen the videos that he has shared with the American people to encourage them that, hey, I'm okay, I'm going to make it through this. And by the way, that office suite looks amazing there. Like, I know he's the president, but I'm really jealous. I want that office suite. Like, he's got some, some good setup there. But he made more appearances. He did more in the last several days that he's been at Walter Reed than Joe Biden did, who's just being Joe Biden. He's just out on the campaign trail, but he's really not, he's not saying much. I mean, yeah, he made some appearances, but while the energy levels for Biden are garbage, you see the Bernie Sanders event, you see every event Joe does, the, the one where he played Despacito and walked out to like two and a half people, to every other one he's done. And then you compare it to this, the president of the United States who's got a massive, enthusiastic, passionate, patriotic following, has people outside this whole time. He's been in Walter Reed. He's had clips like this showing them outside Roll 2. So uh, there's one example. Here's another, just because we've got several and, and we got time, so let's do it. Roll 3. And then here's them chanting outside at, at a, yet another show of support for the president, Rule 4. I mean, I, I'm no mathematician, but I've got eyes. I don't think that 
just at that event right there, which is not the size of, of Trump's, the president's rallies, but you've, you saw all those clips there, tons of support, and not just there, everywhere, but, but tons of support specifically in D.C. And, and in and around the area of, of, of Walter Reed for the President Trump. But I don't think that Joe Biden's had that many people combined at all of his events, as you saw in that crowd right there, because there's no excitement behind him. There's no enthusiasm behind Joe Biden. People rallied behind the president. Of course, we've seen people in the media, politicians, and all the trolls and, and awful individuals that are out there on Twitter say nasty things. But at the end of the day, be as nasty as you want on CNN. Be as nasty as you want on Twitter. Be as nasty as you want on Capitol Hill. You don't have that. You don't have that excitement and that enthusiasm. And there's so much more behind all that because as we talk about all the time, there's people who are scared to share their political beliefs because of you crazy people over here who will attack them verbally, physically, or otherwise for, for having beliefs that are different than the radical left. But the things got better and, and the wedge got driven even you know, further in and, and divided things further because like a true leader who knows his people are concerned for him, Trump came out, he teased, he teased that he was going to do something, then he came out and he made an appearance, and he did this, roll five. So pretty awesome, right? He, he comes out, <clears throat> makes an appearance. Of course, it immediately sparked outrage. Immediately sparked outrage. How dare the president, who's feeling up to it, as the leader of the free world, go give some encouragement to his supporters, Americans. They claimed he was putting Secret Service agents in harm, harm's way. Wasn't healthy enough to do it. Because, of course, they're better qualified than the amazing staff of medical doctors at Walter Reed. You know, Pelosi knows better. CNN knows better. The New York Times knows better. Washington Post knows better. They all know far better than a trained doctor who is not only familiar with the science and the medicine, but is familiar specifically with President Trump's case, his health, his status, all of that. And the Secret Service, you, you take this and, and you forget because most people out there listening, even, even good patriotic Americans, conservatives, and Christians don't fully understand. A lot of you do. I'm not trying to attack your, 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 your wisdom here. But there's a lot of people, particularly on the left, who don't understand what goes on in here and in here for people who go out and serve selflessly. Whether it's what I did deploying as a counterterrorism officer so many times, what the military does, law enforcement does. Our first responders, you know, our EMTs, et cetera, do Secret Service, FBI, whatever. There's, there's a different, there's some different wiring going on in there. And these people would do this and they would do it again. That is their job to protect and, and be around the president to ensure that he is safe no matter what. But they also volunteered for this. They volunteered for the job and allegedly volunteered to help him do this, this ride around to visit the people down there. So you can be as mad as you want, but these people are wired different than you. And Americans, for the most part, Democrats, are wired different than you. We don't want someone who's been in 17 terms telling us who we are, what to think, how we should do things, and pretending they can connect with us. We don't want that. You, you, you're missing the point. You're missing who we are. You're missing who America ever was. There's also supposedly plexiglass in between them in the car, and they were wearing masks. So again, you're not a medical doctor. They volunteered to do this. The president knew that people needed to see him, wanted to see him. I think it was awesome. If you disagree, that's fine, but I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I think it was good. Uh, at, at the time of recording this show, you know, it's, it'll be, be out tonight. We record this a little bit earlier than it comes out. The president was set to be released 
today from Walter Reed if things continued on the track that they were on. So that's great. I think it's all really, really positive stuff. I think that this, this has been good on a couple of fronts. Is it, it gives Trump some more awareness of it. I know there's people who say, well, I don't think he really had it. Okay, that's fine. You're welcome to that thought. But it gives him some, some perspective on it. It gives him the ability to push back more on his haters. And it expo- moreover, more than any of that stuff, there's, there's, there's silver linings with everything. But it further showed everything that continues to happen in this country further shows the depravity and the darkness in the Democrats on the other side of the aisle. They just, they, they don't learn their lesson. You know, you, you literally, some of them they did the right thing and offered their condolences, prayers, best thoughts, etc. in the media, politicians, etc. Uh, you know, at the end of the week when the, the prognosis came out. But then hours later, I mean, days later, 72, 48, 72 hours later, they're right back to themselves. They can't help it. They can't help it. They're right back to saying such vile and vicious things that any smart person would know, even if I feel that way, I should probably keep that inside. I should probably not say that. But they can't help themselves. And they think that that's how all of you feel too, which is why they feel confident enough to say it. That, oh yeah, America's going to choose my side. And we've got to get Trump out of office. No. America elected Trump. They wanted him in office. They want him in office again. And you're going you're gonna to learn the hard way, once again, that America's not on board with your plans, your ideals. Real quick before the break, we saw, we, speaking of that worst in humanity that we saw, <clears throat> I thought it was just worth sharing this. We saw the, the worst in all these people. This was, though, a Texas Democrat, Gene Wu, who texted days ago when everything, when the news first dropped. He tweeted a couple times. The first one was this one here we can pull up. Currently, we're the only nation in the world that is actually safer with our commander-in-chief incapacitated. Disgusting. Inaccurate. Not true at all. You're just a Democrat from Texas. But, but then this next one is sick, and this is where it went off the rails. He, he, he since has denied, deleted it, and then denied that he did it. But this, this, was, this was the second tweet. Hard to serve a prison sentence if you're dead. Basically gloating, saying we, we want you to go down, but you're going to die from COVID, and, and clearly he's not broken up about it. Disgusting. Internet's forever, people. It's gonna, I mean, it's going to bite me, it's going to bite you, it's going to bite all of us, but you, I mean, you got to remember that. When you say or do anything these days on the internet, it's there. Someone's got it, even if you delete it. Someone's got it. And I don't know how these Democrats... These people on social media live with themselves with the things they say and do at the end of the day. I get it. I get if you're, you're, look, you're going after ratings in the mainstream media. You're going after trying to keep your power and your control on the Democrat side. But at the end of the day, you got to live with yourself. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. Hey, uh, please go to DrewBerkwist.com. Like I said at the top of the show, guys, people in conservative digital media are getting crushed right now. Getting crushed right now because they don't want our voice out there. It's no different at DrewBerkwist.com. We've got tons of great content. It's getting better all the time. We're trying to improve the sources of content that are coming in, the people we've got on staff here. So go give us that support. We desperately need it. We desperately want to get that news out to you. And there's tons there. You can also watch the show there on a daily basis. Also, same thing applies. Go to Facebook, Twitter, Parler. Give us a like, a follow if you have not already. Share with your friends, your colleagues, your family, and, and subscribe down here on YouTube if, if you have not. We'd be so honored to have you join our, our crew, be a part of what we're doing here, engage with us, and vice versa. Uh, it's really important that you do. So we appreciate you doing that in advance. And please, please, please share away so we can get this message out. All right, on the other side, we're going to talk about Chris Wallace. Don't like that guy. God, I don't like that guy. But he got into it with Trump advisor Steve Cortez talking about masks, talking about the debate, and again showed how smug and arrogant he is. We'll get to it on the other side. Stick around. America's under attack, and they're all around us. I'm talking about liberal Democrats, and they're out to destroy everything that we've worked so hard for. Mammoth Nation's here to fight for you. You only get one vote. So let's join forces. 
We support conservative lawmakers in the causes you hold so dearly. We stand behind our police, veterans, the Second Amendment, and much more. We need your help, so join today. Welcome back, folks. This segment of the show brought to you by Hero Soap Company. Awesome products. Awesome company. Veteran-owned. Put a huge emphasis. Huge, huge, huge emphasis on getting homeless vets off the streets, working with Operation Finally Home to do so. Their soap is off the chain. Tons of amazing products there on the site. You've got to check them out. You've got to check them out. They're made with all natural essential oils, none of the fragrance and chemicals that are harmful to you that competitor soap companies use. So head on over there. It's handmade right here in the USA. U.S. made. Veteran owned. Helping homeless vets. Awesome products. Wins all the, all the way across the board. So head on over to HeroSoapCompany.com and subscribe for a no contract monthly delivery of soap straight to your front door and never run out again. Again, that's HeroSoapCompany.com. Let freedom clean. Chris Wallace is the worst. He, he needs some soap because he's dirty. He's a dirty guy. And he's, of course, been on a tear since the debate because the debate was chaotic. It was contentious. Of course, he's trying to help his boy Joe. He loathes, despises President Trump. Has gone on a tear about just, you'll hear it in here, about how many times he was interrupted, this, that, and the other. Although he interrupted the president multiple times, and that's the reason the president had to interrupt him, is so he could actually get his message out because Wallace didn't want his message getting out to the American people. But ever since hearing about Trump's diagnosis, he's been on an even bigger tear. He's really just, he's been out there. He's been vocal. You know, at first it's, you know, I wanted the debate to be better. I'm sorry that it wasn't. Trump got COVID all. I'm sorry. I'm praying for him. Now it's the debate was a disaster. Trump's a disaster. He, he's not taking COVID seriously. He put us in jeopardy. He's thinking of himself, of course, put us in jeopardy at the debate. Although we don't know who or where or how he got like i mean those are ludicrous i remember when i got it people trying to figure out well was it this person or that person or what like you don't know like stop even trying to figure it out especially back at the beginning like everyone's interacting with every like you just don't know you don't know but he had uh trump advisor steve cortez on and things got hot quickly i'll show you most of the exchange here rule six not apply to them no, that's not the reality. Look, everybody was tested before that event, as you well know. Uh, those of us who went first were tested by Cleveland Clinic directly. Everybody who gets on Air Force One for any trip on Air Force One is tested before they get on. Steve, in it doesn't matter. That, Steve, it doesn't Steve, matter. Everybody no. that was in that room was tested. Steve, everybody that was in that room was tested. And the Cleveland right. Clinic's regulation was it didn't matter. Everybody except and, for the three of us on the stage, was to wear a mask. And people from the Cleveland Clinic came over and offered the first family masks, thinking maybe they didn't have them. They were waved away. And the Commission on Presidential Debates has issued a statement saying, from now on, if you don't wear a mask, you're going to be escorted from the hall. So forget this question of being tested Chris, beforehand. Everybody was tested we, beforehand. The, no, I'm going to finish my question. Everybody was told to wear a mask. Why did the first family and the chief of staff feel that the rules for everybody else didn't apply to them? Chris, we believe that masks are very useful. The president has worn them on many occasions, including visiting the hospital where he's now a patient when he was visiting as commander in chief, as a guest to visit soldiers there. He wore a mask. So we believe in masks. We also believe in some element of individual choice. People were distanced and they had been tested. Both of those things were true in that no, convention. No, Steve, hall. they weren't and distanced and there were rules and there was no there was they, no freedom of choice. I, they broke the Chris, rules. I was there, I was there like no, you were and they Steve, were distanced. Wh why those did they chairs break were the not rules? Close together. Look, those chairs were not close together. And again, we also believe that people. It doesn't can matter, make Steve. The rules from the Cleveland Clinic they were close together, Steve. And the rules okay. from the Cleveland Clinic were everybody wears you know, a mask. Why didn't Chris, they? Chris, the way you're starting to harangue me now actually reminds me of what you did to the president during that debate on Tuesday night when oh, he yeah, debated he, not I just Joe him. No, and then he had to he had to debate not just Joe Joe Biden, but you as well. You were not a neutral moderator then. I don't mind tough questions. I welcome you know my, reasonably tough questions, but what I don't think is okay is for you to become the effective opposition to the president. Okay? And those everyone there was it, tested it, it, in the crowd. They were distanced from each other. People can make reasonable Steve, decisions that, for themselves. State no, they actually, they can't. They're the rules and they'll be kicked out next time. Steve, let me just simply say the president interrupted me and the vice president 145 times. So I object to saying I harangued the president. I know it's the talking. 
Hey, Cortez makes such a good point. I mean, that that interview right there was literally just like the debate. Wallace was arrogant and smug as he always is, thinking he's more important and more sophisticated and smart than everyone else. He's not. He's just a tiny little dude. But he's cutting cutting people off again, saying it doesn't matter. No, that doesn't matter. Your interpretation is wrong, meaning only the way I look at it is right, which is not a helpful way to have any kind of discussion or dialogue. He was saying they weren't spaced as there was video showing on his network showing them spaced. Now look, <clears throat> all right, the rules, the rules are the rules. Should they have done it if those are the rules? According to the rules, yes. But they're also the first family. They're trying to show that it's okay when the stats are really in your favor going out there. You know, again, remember, everyone scares you with the number of cases, which is it's way more than they actually tell you because there's a lot of people who've had it and don't even know it, weren't tested. And then they try and scare you with, with the... The death figures, but those are skewed because they're just lumping. I mean, George, keep in mind, George Floyd's in those death figures because he had COVID. He didn't die of COVID, so neither did a lot of other people. There's, there's a lot of things that you need to look at a little bit more seriously, and you'll see that that number is actually a lot smaller. Still, still a problem. Even one person dying is too much, but still a problem. But they keep pushing this whole thing. And he bold, boldly and gleefully says that the Trump family will be kicked out of the next one if they're not wearing masks. Like, like he can't wait. Because you know he can't. Because he's an enemy of the Republican Party, Chris Wallace is. He's definitely an enemy of the Trumps. He's an enemy of, of reason and anyone that has a different thought than him, which is so typical Democrat. I know there's some people who think he's a conservative. He's not. Look at, the, look at his actions. Look at his words. He's not. Him, Donna Brazil, Juan Williams, those people have tainted that network so much. Bringing them on as a guest or something to have a differing opinion, I think would be a good thing and it is a good thing. But the way that they've given them such a big voice, ah, just, I'm going to finish the question. I'm going to finish. Uh, he, the, the guy is just the worst. He's just the worst. But he's not the only one who's awful. Obviously, a lot of people over at CNN are. Jake Tapper went on a rant, wishing the president the best, while also slamming him left and right. This was, this was him talking the other day, Rule 7. Many Americans are likely feeling both sympathy and anger today, emotions that don't necessarily mix well. Sympathy for all of those suffering, including President Trump, who remains at Walter Reed Medical Center. But also anger, because so much, so much of all this pain could have been avoided. So many of us since March have been doing everything we can to preserve the health of not only ourselves and our families, but our communities, our neighbors, you. Social distancing, wearing masks, holding events remotely. Weddings have been canceled, jobs lost. Children are missing out on in-person education and their ability to see friends. It's a real crisis. It's going to leave scars. 208,000 Americans have died. Thousands of Americans have lost loved ones without being able to properly mourn or even say goodbye. But we're in the middle of a once in a century pandemic. Health experts say this is what we need to do in order to get to the other side. Regardless of the sympathy we may feel, we also know the president has been undermining these efforts expressing disdain for health regulations and those who abide by them. Do you remember this? Can you take it up because I cannot hear I'll, you? I'll just speak louder, sir. Oh, this, okay, because you want to be politically correct. Go ahead. No, sir, I just want to wear Go the mask. Ahead. Politically correct. The Americans who don't listen to science or medicine, who think masks are too intrusive, who pack bars, who willfully risk spreading the virus, you are making it worse for all of us. You are extending how long this pandemic will last. And it is tragic to say, many if not most of you are taking your cues from the leader of the free world. Last weekend, at an event held both inside and outside, but with no masks required and no distancing, President Trump introduced his Supreme Court nominee. So far, at least eight attendees of that event have tested positive for the virus. 
Look at Senator Mike Lee at this event. My God, how are future generations gonna try to make sense of these images of the Republican leaders of the nation acting like this during a once in a century pandemic with more than 200,000 Americans dead? I wish every one of these leaders, Senator Lee, President Trump, Kellyanne Conway, Chris Christie, I wish you all a full and speedy recovery. But do you not see? It's not just through failed leadership or setting bad examples. You are all now literally risking spreading the virus yourselves. The president and his team have been behaving as if the pandemic is over. This callous indifference to the well-being of the citizens the president swore to protect, it's no longer just theoretical. It's no longer, well, they might get the virus. After finding out Hope Hicks, a top aide with whom the president had been in close contact, after learning she was sick with the virus and actually showing symptoms, the president flew to a fundraiser in New Jersey and mingled. Did anyone in the White House or on the Trump campaign consider at all the housekeepers and bartenders at Bedminster, the naval aviators who flew them there on Air Force One, the young interns or old donors with whom the president came in contact? Anyone? Anyone at all? I wish you all health and recovery and a long life. But we have to note the tragedy here. It is horrible and awful and profound. Sick and in isolation, Mr. President, you have become a symbol of your own failures, failures of recklessness, ignorance, arrogance, the same failures you have been inflicting on the rest of us. Get well, and please, for the rest of us who don't get to go to Walter Reed, get well and get it together. There's an arrogant man calling someone else arrogant. And, and the profound ignorance <clears throat> is an interesting statement there. You know, he says we're taking our cues, you know, people, conservatives, people who are not as concerned about the virus anymore as they maybe once were. When this first started, everyone was scared and terrified because it was new and it is very contagious. It does spread. But we're not taking our cues just from the president. We're taking our cues from the numbers that are out there presented by the scientists who you hold so dearly up as on this pedestal of, of greatness we're holding the numbers we're, we're we're taking our cues from common sense this thing is very contagious it's not fun to have i've had it but the the arrogance and the smugness that we see from you people trying to push your fear and maybe jake tapper maybe you believe everything you just said and you're not doing it for ratings or because your network told you to maybe you're just that dumb but the reality is, and it sucks that those people, the, the Kellyanne Conways and, and Kaylee McEnany's got it. Now, all these people, it sucks that they all got it. But you, you can't just say it's because they were reckless. You can't just, a lot of people have had it who don't know. A lot of people have had it who do know. And a lot of people are still going to get it. But the data, the data doesn't line up with anything that you guys are talking about or pushing, other than the fact that it is contagious and yes, people can die. People can die from lots of things. The numbers don't line up and say that you're going to die from this. They certainly don't. I don't know how you can reasonably and rationally continue to push that narrative to your audience at CNN, which continues to go down. But still, it's a big audience, and you're pushing that out to America. So is MSNBC. So is CBS News, ABC News, NBC News. Everyone is pushing that narrative. When again, look at the data that's there from CDC and all these other places. You share big numbers. You notice they always have it on the sidebar on CNN, MSNBC, and even Fox, for that matter, a lot, a lot of the times, showing the, the, the global numbers, how many people have had it, how many people have died, and then the, the U.S. numbers, how many people have had it, and how many people have died. They do that for shock factor. They do that so you keep watching. It's a ratings game. It is real. It's very real to some families who have lost people, but the amount of people who have lost people specifically and, and solely to COVID is a number they would never share. They never want to share that. But it's up to you. It's up to you to decide what you want to believe. It sucks the president got it. It sucks these other people got it. it sucks I got it. it. sucks for the people, regardless of political affiliation, that they got it. But I would also say this. He's saying it's a once-in-a-century thing. As well as they've seen this work, 
Ah. Don't be surprised if it's not pulled out of the playbook again at some point. Um, just saying. Finally, last thing from CNN, just because I hate them, and I think they're awful, and I don't think they, they share the sentiment that most Americans do. They were talking about, they had Jason Miller on, who's the Trump advisor, and, and he just got cut off. Well, you, you, you can see the clip here, but he just gets cut off because he has a different opinion than them. Roll eight. Match up. So, for with example, all due respect, he says though, there needs Jason, to be with all due respect, outdoor, outdoor Joe Biden mandate. is not the one in the hospital having contracted the coronavirus. Not in President Trump, and this is this is the whole point that you can have every safeguard in place. There are so many things we don't know about this virus. You can have everything in place and still contract it. So the whole point is we have to go and defeat this virus. We can't stay locked up in our basements forever. Americans. And I'm so sorry, Jason Miller. We just lost his satellite because uh, that interview went longer than we had expected. Jason Miller, my thanks to you for joining us and uh, taking those questions this evening. We'll continue. I'm sure she's she's so sorry, so sorry. Of course, of course, he's bringing some common sense, rational responses to it. We do. We need to open up. We need to get out there. She was picking on him for the whole Secret Service thing and and Trump putting them in harm's way, according to her and her network's logic and, and many Democrats out there. But guys, I just encourage you. I do it every day. But but look at the data. I'm not saying be stupid and be reckless and careless. No one's trying to to, to spin or sp spread that message. But just look at the look at the information that's available to you. Don't just listen to people like Jake Tapper. You can see on Jake Tapper and Chris Como's face that they're a douchebag. Some faces just basically are tattooed douchebag. You can see it. So why would you listen to what they say and just trust it? Why would you listen to Don Lemon and and and, and trust it? Same thing goes for a lot of the people on Fox. I'm not saying that they're they're off the hook. I'm just saying just because someone's sitting there reading a teleprompter telling you what to think and what to say and that the data which you can you can manipulate any numbers in any data to convey any message that you want whether it's a political poll something for their climate change initiative something for whatever you can always spin data this way or that way it's up to you to figure out what's true and what's not though and dig a little bit deeper so i hope that you're doing that i hope that you're not watching cnn god that's an awful decision if you're doing that uh check in to see what they're saying every once in a while just to test your ticker and your heart, get your blood pressure up a little bit, and then switch the channel, pour a bourbon, and, and, and relax and enjoy something better than that. But um, all right, on the other side, we're going to talk more about the election, this ballot harvesting stuff that continues to be an issue, but no one's really talking about it. Mail-in election, mail-in ballots, all that stuff. We talked about it with retired Army colonel. John Mills a couple weeks ago, he's going to come back. We're going to get some new updates, some new stuff happening. All that's coming up on the other side. Stick around. Do you love freedom? Do you love being clean? Then you'll love Hero Soap Company, made in the USA. Chemical and fragrance free. A portion of each purchase donated to veteran and first responder charities. Initial subscription purchase is matched bar for bar and sent overseas to deploy troops. Let freedom clean. Hero Soap Company. All right, folks, welcome back. Joining us now is retired U.S. Army Colonel John Mills. He's also the spokesman for the National Election Integrity Task Force. You've seen him here before. He's back now. John, good to see you. Good to see you, Drew. Thank you, as always. Absolutely. Well, it's good to have you. Uh, it's been crazy. You know, we, we had you several weeks back. We talked about, you know, election fraud, all the stuff that's going on, foreign influence. Uh, there, there's just a ton going on. More recently, though, since we've had you, Project Veritas, of course, dropped their video talking about the ballot harvesting, exposing the ballot harvesting that was going on in Minneapolis as it pertained to city council people there, Ilhan Omar, et cetera. How, how big of an issue is this nationally? I know there's been concern. I know we talked about it last time, but how much should people really be concerned about this happening, not just in Minneapolis or in this city or that city, but across the country? Uh, they should be very concerned. Involved citizens, all, all Americans need to be involved as sworn election officials to supervise and oversee this. Uh, uh, Ilhan Omar, I think I think she's Minnesota Five, and that ballot harvesting it just reflects the, and shows the chaos. This is you know potentially tens of thousands of ballots 
And it also demonstrates the absolute legal importance of a signature, and it shows the difference between a ballot harvesting, mail-in ballots, collected ballots, and uh, 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 other forms of uh, voting uh, where you have, a, you have a signature. Yeah. Well, I, but I, I mean, that message is still not getting out. And, and what you guys do at the task force and what you've done, you know, specifically in Virginia and whatnot, and your studies, obviously you're very aware of how this gets out there. The, the mainstream media is very, very much controlled by the Democrats. And I don't want to put you in a position where you have to be partisan or not, but, but how that is the, the truth of what we're facing here. How do we get this message out more successfully to the masses when, when you're going up against someone who doesn't want the message out? Well, the, the challenge is you bring this up, and uh, it's one of several terms is always used. Uh, uh, conspiracy theory, uh, gaslighting, uh, uh, other ex dog whistle, et cetera, et cetera. I, I'm sorry, it's true. And so we're speaking to those who are open-minded in the centrist uh, part of the camp, which most people are more in the centrist camp. They just want the right thing to be done. Uh, like, like you, I've worked overseas. I've worked and I've run elections in Bosnia, in Iraq, and uh, in the U.S. here. And this is precious what we have here. So we need to take this very seriously. And we cannot let this just become a circus where anything goes here. It is one vote per lawful voter here. And that's very important. In Virginia, we have 12% on the rolls by the court and the election commission's own information that they have not cleaned up. 12% unlawful voters in Virginia. It's insanity. It is insanity. Well, and, and you don't want, you, you know, you, you need lawful voters, as you said. Everyone gets one vote. And then, and it, which, which obviously states that we want to block these, these multiple votes, this ballot harvesting stuff, all the different stuff that's going on. But also we got to ensure that that one vote gets there too, that you voted for the president and the person carrying the mail or the person behind the system doesn't like the president. So I'm not going to let that vote even get there. It's not going to get counted. Everyone needs to know that, that their vote goes there. And that, that's how you get to a better spot than we are now. And I, and I know this isn't a new phenomenon. I know this stuff has been going on before the 2020 election. But I, if we could just get to the point where it's, hey, may the best man or woman win. Like, that's, that's how we need to get there. But we can't feel that way this year. And we can't feel that way really in general and in and, and, and previous years either because we learn so much more every day about what's going on behind the scenes. And it's, it's really, really scary. And it's really depressing because – you don't know that your your voice is going to the right spot. One, one of the things that's happening behind the scenes that you and I talked about a little bit off camera that I wanted to get your thoughts on now is you you were bringing up this group in Vancouver, how Chinese money is coming through Vancouver across the, the, the border there and, and affecting elections and all sorts of other stuff here in America. What, what Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is very well documented by a small group of Canadian re reporters who have just done heroic work as they do their job on their side of the border to try to reestablish civil society here, and uh, as we fight on this side to reverse uh, some of the behaviors instituted by the Howard Zinn and 1619 project here. But yeah, Vancouver, absolutely well documented. The Big Circle Boys, uh, which is a traditional gang that has existed, it is real. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's not gaslighting. Okay, none of those things here. Uh, there has been a traditional flow from Hong Kong, but as Hong Kong has been crushed by the communist Chinese, the big circle has essentially become an extension of the, uh, of the, the Chinese apparatus. And there's, there is now a, essentially a well-documented triangulation between the big circle boys, the Chinese Progressive Association. Now we have Black, Live, Black Lives Labs, an adjunct of BLM, uh, well documented, uh, and then so, uh, Fruit Freedom Road, so Socialist Road, all these different organizations, and 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 they they all coincidentally have a footprint in in Vancouver. The Big Circle Boys also own the casinos, which uh, casinos are uh, always a perfect way to to launder launder funds. Right. So it it, it is real. It does exist. Uh, Seattle and Portland being two to four hours south, uh, there is no coincidence here. Yeah. Well, now, is any of that going? Is there any proof that that's going towards be, beyond the violence and stuff you're seeing in Seattle, that it's having any kind of an influence on elections, or is it just to to sow chaos and havoc in the U.S.? 
Well, uh, so as I, as I mentioned before, it is now and essentially Black Lives Labs has said that they are receiving money from the Chinese Progressive Association. Uh, there's nothing, uh, we, we have to be intellectually honest about this. The CPA has for years been known as a front for the Chinese Communist Party. We got to call it as such. So to try and uh, uh, evade or avoid or obfuscate uh, groups like this, uh, there's something called the Foreign Agent Registration Act. You could be a foreign agent all you want, you just need to register. So the FAR is a powerful tool. Uh, I would suggest some of these groups, there is a, a there is a legal vetting and a legal process internally at Department of Justice, so there is a bar that has to be uh, achieved. Uh, but I would say uh, several of these groups really uh, at least meet, if not surpass that bar. And I would I would I would argue it is not an illogical extension with this amount of cash on the streets. Again, cash on the street is the lifeblood of chaos like this, whether it's Bosnia, whether it's Iraq, whether it's some other place, cash is the lifeblood. We can't track cash. There, there are specific uh, financial rules, banking rules. It's harder to track when it's outside of the SWIFT financial system here. Uh, when it's a cash-heavy operation, that always leads to malfeasance and is always an opportunity for malfeasance. So with the self-professed acknowledgement of these groups, and that's all we're doing is, is acknowledging the self-reporting of these groups being uh, working with each other, CPA essentially being the hub, but you've got the big circle boys. You got, uh, uh, again, that extension of BLM, which should be considered to be connected to the core of BLM. And I I'm sorry, these are self-reporting. They are reporting this. All we are doing is relaying their reports. With yeah. that amount of cash, it is not illogical to assume that that cash is being used for an election influence operations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's <clears throat> there's so much there right before it <laughs> before us. It's just it's just getting people to see it, getting people to connect the dots. Thankfully, there's people like yourself who are out there doing it. Uh, getting back more specifically to the election, obviously that plays into it. We we talked earlier about the messaging about you know, the Democrats trying to say, no, 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 that's a conspiracy. That's not happening. Trying to lump absentee ballots and universal mail-in ballots and whatnot together into one pile, even though that's not true. But, I mean, the Democrats are winning this argument, are they not? I mean, they're, 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 they're convincing more people that it's not an issue. And by the way, this has started. Mail-in voting has already started. I mean, are we too far behind to kind of catch up here for this particular election? No, not at all. And uh, just as Churchill would, would say, you know, never, ever, ever give up, never, ever give in. Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, and the simple legal uh, uh, response to the, the mail in chaos is, is, is lack of a signature. Uh, that is so important and foundational, and it's just dismissed. Absentee ballots, you have to attest in front of a sworn election official. OK, now all this other silliness and all these other expressions that are used. And again, if you question them, you're gaslighting, it's a conspiracy, it's a dog whistle, blah, 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 blah. I, I'm sorry, that is not rational or reasonable here. You know, we had uh, the Veritas reports in Minneapolis, and I believe uh, there was a major one just released in Houston also. There was also a singular report out of Florida this morning here. So uh, yeah, uh, it, it does exist. And I think the number, uh, it was amazing because actually the Obama administration was very active in uh, using DOJ to enforce election law. I think it was close to a thousand prosecutions over the eight years. So I just would say to those who say it doesn't exist, well, I guess those thousand prosecutions don't exist during the Obama years. Right. <laughs> exactly. Again, look at it. It's right there before you. How long? We got we to run here in a second, but how long you know, considering all of this stuff, considering the debate about it, considering that this is very much a tactic that the left is using to try to sway this election in their favor and pull the wool over the eyes of the American people. Do you think we know a winner on election night? And if not, how long until we do? Well, I hope we do. I hope we do on election night. I hope it's decisive. Uh, and I, I sure do not forget uh, the, the year 2000. That was chaos, and I remember that. And one side just, no matter what, they'd quibble, they'd parse, they'd come back. It wasn't a hanging chat. What was the intent of the voter? It was a, people forget what a bare knuckle brawl that was. And we, well into January, it was unclear who the winner was. That was chaos. I remember that very clearly. So this is not necessarily new, but again, 
Uh, any American who's concerned about this, I exhort you, I encourage you, please become a sworn election official. Go to your county website. I guarantee if you go to your county website and type in election official, their link will pop up. And I encourage you to go there, be a sworn election official. Do not sit on the sidelines. There's and again, there's massive overrepresentation on one side in Virginia, 70 percent Democrat. They're desperate for Republicans. And, and that's the challenge is one side just assumes somebody is taking care of the election. And the problem is, yes, somebody is taking care of the election. Get out there and be a sworn election official. A poll watcher is not a sworn election official. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. And I think it's, you know, we all know the, the, the statement and the sentiment behind assuming things. And I think that we've done that far too long. It's just important now that, that Americans in general, regardless of their side, but particularly the GOP, who tends to be behind on some of this stuff, gets out there, gets involved, and pushes back against this narrative. We Listen, we, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate your service to this country. Uh, and we'll definitely look forward to having you back. All right. Thank you. You too, Drew. Appreciate it as always. Take care. Take care. All right, folks, stick around for after hours. We're going to get into something that's not good for Biden. We've heard about Tara Reid. We've heard about all this stuff. 60 Minutes Australia went out there and they ran a, a, a special on it. We'll show you her words. And we'll, we'll talk about whether the Biden staff and, and campaign, Biden himself, will respond to them. Probably will just get pushed under the rug. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to show it to you. I was pretty pleased to see them do it. Thanks again to our sponsors, Mammoth Nation, our episode sponsors, Mammoth Nation, Soldier Solutions, also segment sponsor, uh, Hero Soap Company. Great companies, guys. Give them a look. Subscribe to us, Facebook, Twitter, Parlor, all the, the normal places right down here on, on YouTube in the corner if you haven't done so already, because it's so important. It's so important to get the message out there. And the best way to do that is for you guys to be involved, to be engaged, to subscribe, to share, 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 and help get the message out there. Uh, and remember, we've all got our own thoughts and opinions, and you're welcome to them. But this is my show. 